Hey everybody, welcome to the Base Shed Podcast. My name is Ryan Roberts. So today on the show we got uh, a great friend of mine, Greg Cash, in here talking. Um, him and I had did the interview and then the cat jumped on the table and disconnected some wires and so we picked up where we left off and just kept going. Um, kind of bummed that we I lost I lost the audio. You know I got to figure out how to do auto save. Uh, we still had a great time, and uh, so hang out, check that out, Greg Cash. Um, I want to make a public apology because on the last episode, I spoke about going down the rabbit hole and uh, talking about uh, who started the Walking Baseline, whether Jimmy Blanton or Walter Page. All right. I said the wrong name. I said the wrong name, Wellman Broad. I think that's how you pronounce his last name, Broad. Maybe Bro, uh, with an X there. That was sometimes how it was spelled. Um, Wellman and Walter. Wellman was a big influence on Walter. I have to make that adjustment that I'm aware I screwed it up. Um, so sorry about that. And here's Greg Cash. Check one, two, check one, two. Cheer, cheer, cheer. All right, all right, we're back. We're back at it. We back at it? I think we're back in. We all right, pick so back up. We're back on the road. We're on the road with Greg Cash. Yes. So, touring, bro. You don't like touring. Yeah. I enjoy touring. Yeah. I like the spontaneity of it all. Right. You like being in town. I, I mean, I love being in town, too. Yeah. I just get stir crazy. Well, that's that's happened to me recently. Yeah. yeah. Like, I just kind of had a meltdown about it. Like, I got sick of playing the same places. I got sick of what the scene was. Yeah. I got sick of just, like, the... And you and I are in two totally different scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? No, yeah, that's why I love this. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, it's... I don't know if I know a bass player that's as far removed from my world. Dude, I... But who's, like, we're, we're doing the same grind in the same city. Just in two Polar different worlds. Yeah, like, yeah. people you know, I'm like, I have no idea who you're talking about. <laughs> oh, right, right, you know right. what I mean? Right, but then there's a handful of guys like, oh, yeah. yeah well, everybody knows. Right, right, right. You know, I mean, that that's... But that's L.A., too. I mean, it's, it's like you're a LA. one degree of separation from anybody. Right. You know what How I mean? How far are you from Kevin Bacon? Less than six. Less than six? Yeah. I opened up for the Bacon Brothers. Like, one of my first gigs in L.A. Really? Yeah. Oh, dude, speaking of Tower of Power, you were just playing me a track. Uh, so, the drummer on this was Herman Matthews. Okay, yeah, yeah. Who cut the Sold Out record. Yeah, yeah. Now, I didn't know I didn't know the drummer's name until we got to the gig, but we did the rehearsal. Yeah. <coughs> and he comes in. I don't know where he was coming from. And we were playing with uh, this, like, independent singer-songwriter guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, named Brett Michaels, but not The Brett Michaels. So he just he got that lot in life, dude. That's great. Uh, I thought you were gonna drop like Craig Lyons or something. <laughs> dog. Oh, Big Perm, dude. Yo, shout out to my boy Big Perm, dude. We miss you, dog. Yeah. You got I, your you I got your bass players. Yeah. Have you talked to him? Man, like a couple of years ago. Dude, we should reach out like, to Big I Perm. I hit him up on like Facebook or something. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I'm never on this thing anymore. Yeah. Right. That's fine. Anyway. Yeah. No, I miss that guy. Yeah. So Good do people. I. Yeah. So anyway, so um. So it turns out like. <coughs> the drummer came in, super great guy. Yeah. And he's like, man, did I shuffle that too hard? And the whole time I'm thinking, like, dude, this record is nuts. Yeah, I yeah. love this. No, no, you did not shuffle. That was perfect. perfect. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it wasn't until I got to the gig. Because then he left the rehearsal, and I talked to the, the band leader. I'm like, dude, who was that? Yeah. He's like, oh, that's Herman Matthews. And I'm like, what? Oh, what? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'm like, glad I didn't know before that. Oh, dude, that you would have been playing with Herman. Yeah, because you'd be sh shitting bricks, dude. So inside my own head, yeah. Uh, but then we opened up for the Bacon, uh, the Bacon Brothers at the Canyon Club. Nice. Way out, uh, Agora. Thousand Oaks, yep. Agora? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, out that way. Right. That was one of my first gigs in LA. That's pretty sick. Right, right. <laughs> the Bacon Brothers. Dude, I, so didn't, I didn't really stay for their set. I caught a couple tunes and I'm like, ah, I'm out. Did you meet them or no? Yeah, I met them backstage. So there you go. Dude, there's yeah. my one degree of separation. Boom. Boom. Bam. Yeah. LA, dog. <laughs> right? LA, dude. Dude, I got, I got some stories like that. Like, yeah. I yeah. mean, that's great. But that's like when you just play like those L.A. gigs. Yeah, of course. You know, like, right. I was playing a, a dinner party out in Malibu. It, <laughs> it, it was a birthday party. Was it at the Malibu Inn, dog? No, it was at a house. Okay. And it was, it was a birthday party, but because of how the gig kind of happened, um, I think it all kind of came – Via another piano player. He, the other piano player is the guy that called me for it, but Jeff Bapko had called him for oh, it. Oh, shit, yeah. So <clears throat> the piano player calls me, and he's like, yo, heads up. Like, 
you know, Martin Short's going to be there because this all came through Babco, and yeah. there's going to be some celebrities, just heads up, you know. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. Sure enough, like, we're playing dinner music, and, like, Martin Short comes up to me. He's just like, hey, how you doing? I'm Marty Short. And he just, like, goes out of his way, interrupts the tune, interrupts me. It was, <laughs> it was amazing. That's dope. Dude, I got to play the blues with Dan Aykroyd. That's David, what? David, I didn't David, know this. David Foster. This, yeah, was, yeah. this was the thing. It was me, David Foster, playing piano, and Dan Aykroyd singing and playing harmonica. Dude, this is fucking dope. That was amazing. That's yeah. like that's like life changing yeah. shit, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was like, really cool. Seriously. Yeah, that was that's a big one. Fucking insane. Yeah, dude. Every, Wayne Gretzky was there. <laughs> Pat Riley, the old coach of the Knicks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, but that's L.A., dude. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? It was just like a. It was an LA gig, and it was it was on a weird night. It was like a Monday night or something. Yeah, of course. Because I remember my friend Zane. People in LA don't have real jobs. No. They no. don't have like well, nine no, to definitely five. not those guys. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? Like, Monday could be a Friday. Dude, yeah, Monday is exactly. my Friday. Right. But, like, I took the Monday night gig because, you know, like, the bread was cool. Yeah. And then next thing you know, I'm playing blues with the Blues Brothers. That's fucking insane. Yeah, yeah. That's so dope. Yeah, that was a good one. Fuck. Yeah, so how did we how did we get on that? I don't know. Yeah. Gigs in LA, people. Gigs, yeah, that's 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 definitely an LA gig. Dude, for sure. I had a good one. I had a good one happen last year at Nam. I don't know. I'm a metalhead still at heart. Yeah. So, um, I'm playing the Seymour Duncan booth with Jared. Okay. Jared James Nichols and. What's his deal? I haven't heard. I haven't dude. Heard. Dan it told me, a insane. mutual friend Dan McMahon told me you were out on the road with him and. Insane guitar player, yeah. like dude. Blue, so he's like power trio style. Yeah, power okay. trio. It's like, dude, he's like Albert King meets like Stevie Ray Vaughan, but then like throw like Zach Wilde's like oh. crazy vibrato. But he doesn't play with a pick. He's got like the whole Albert King like yeah. thumb style, like okay. really weird. But he does like a lot of chicken picking stuff. Dude, really insane blues player. Like, dude, this guy makes one note just scream. How long were you out with him? Uh, dude, we've, I've been with him for, you still doing dates when they come up? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, fuck. I've been with him for over a year now. Okay. Dude, screaming guitar player. Yeah. Insane, dude. Like, he, dude, it's crazy. Right. Cause he's got like the old school blues thing, but he does like more like the blues rock stuff. But man, it's a fucking free for all on stage That's in cool. the best way possible. Like as a bass player, it's like, dude, he started throwing solos at me and I'm yeah. like, I don't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> now I'm like, oh yeah, let's fucking go. You want to trade fours, motherfucker? It's like, and we'll we'll fuck with each other too. Like, dude, we'll be we'll be playing something, and dude, I'll I'll go from major to minor and not tell him. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll throw me a bass solo in like a slow shuffle and a. Yeah. Like, dude, do you know how hard it is to do anything semi interesting on bass with nothing going on? And a slow shuffle and a right. fuck, dude. That's the hardest thing that like you could do to a bass player, sure. and have it actually be like kind of hit, which it's not. I usually end up just that's falling a, flat on my fucking that's face. A jazz thing too, like a lot of times during bass solos, like everybody will just dip out. Yeah, you're like, and you just, it's all you. Yeah, you know, you gotta. Yeah, it, at least at least for all my solos, I keep the drummer with me. Okay. You know what I mean? And Jared will drop out, but dude, still, it's like fuck, man. So yeah, but we'll like in the, in a good way, like dude, we'll fuck with each other. What kind of size clubs? Are uh depends on who we're going out with you know what i mean okay like we uh we've done a lot overseas nice. like a lot overseas and yeah. that's like five hundred thousand plus i mean not headlining but headlining right. well some of the headlining shows we were doing in spain we were doing like 400 okay headlining yeah. so yeah no he's, he's got a really good outreach over there the states is starting to pick up more and all is that he stuff from la originally no he's from wisconsin okay. he's like dude he's like six foot fucking five oh he makes me look like yeah. a tiny man on stage. Right. He makes me look like a very tiny man because he's <laughs> like, he's not heavy. He's just like big. Yeah. Like okay. he's he works out, so he's oh. got big. He's like, he's all, all yoked up, but not like super yoked up. He's just fucking a large man yeah. that can throw around a lot of weight. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? He's not fat. He's skinny. Right. But he's just yeah, solid. He's, he's moving all that. Dude, when it's he's playing. He must have a huge sound. Dude, it's insane. Yeah. And he plays like a single pickup P90 Les Paul. Dude, one pickup, no pedals, nothing. Straight into the amp, Love just it. rides his volume and tone. I've never seen a guitar player ride their tone of as much as him. Yeah. It's fucking... That's it, killing. Dude. And yeah, you never know. Like, there's no set list. There's nothing. He's just calling tunes. Kind of. Just yeah. kind of. And dude, he'll just start going in the shit. Dude, he looks over. And I forget what uh, tune he, like, he, like, looks over. And 
and he's and, and like I said, like, dude, we, we kind of go at it on stage in a good way. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's like it, it's uh, and he looks over and he just starts playing like because we were talking about like Hendrix. And I was like, you know, the Band of Gypsies is my favorite era of Hendrix. Yeah. And dude, he goes into a Band of Gypsies tune, looks over and he's like, uh -huh. what's up? And I'm like, come on. I, yeah, dude, come on. <laughs> Come on, let's go harder than this. You know what I mean? But like, dude, that's the shit, and I love that. Yeah. And and like, he doesn't. Nothing's it, is ever planned or rehearsed, and he show. doesn't know until it's happening. You there know what I mean? And that's crazy. You right. know what I mean? Like in this day and age, like that's how not. Do you, how do you meet that guy? Uh, I've known him for years. A good buddy. Uh, like I know his manager. Okay. I've known his manager for years as well, and uh, he had done some stuff with Dorothy. Oh, okay. Back when I was with Dorothy and all that stuff, and was I was he playing guitar or was he producing or writing? What, or what was he Jared? He was doing his own thing. He was doing okay. the trio thing. His original bass player bailed, wanted to like just go a different route. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like they hit me up, and I had just finished with uh, I was working with that Josh Todd and the Conflict project. I had just finished like we had basically finished up our album cycle, and they were going back to their other band, and. I was like, I had time and management hit me up and was like, yo, you around? And I'm like, fuck yeah, let's get in the room. And we got in the room and it just got gross. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's great. Dude, three piece, just grossness, dude. Yeah. Grossness, man. Nothing, nothing on the books coming up? Uh, John, he's actually uh, John Five Tour. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. John Five. All the guitar. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, all the guitar. <laughs> That's a lot. There's going to be a lot of notes going on, dude. Dope. A lot of notes. Yeah. So, yeah, dude. It's pretty sick. All right. How do we get talking about that? I don't know. This is like the tangent of the tangent. Dude, that's just how this I'm goes. Into it. I'm I, into dude, it. it's fucking great, man. Yeah. I mean, what else can we talk about? So, we've got we've got bass. I mean, how geeky do we want to get right now? I mean, should we get geeky? I'm like, not, talk I'm not a, like a huge gear nerd. Like Neither am I. Like, I've, I pedals and shit, I don't really give a fuck about. You right. know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to. I'm starting to get into them. You know, starting, Do you use a Sans amp? No. Bro, you need to go get a... Like, I for years fought the Sans amp. The fucking Sans amp, it's like, dude, I just put it on. It's always on. Like, and you don't even need it for, like, drive. It's just a fucking preamp. Well, you have, you, well you're using an active bass. I'm using an active bass in my, uh, like, my rig. Yeah, so you don't need it. Like, for the passive shit, it's cool, like, with a P just to give it that little right. extra fucking balls. And the, the biggest thing for the Sans amp with me was... Doing a lot of fly dates yeah. and not knowing what fucking rig was there. So you can't rely on a head for your tone. So sure. basically, the head is just fucking power. I mean, and I, I get the tone out of my bass, obviously, in my hands. And then the Sans amp is consistent. So if I plug into a fucking Aguilar or if I plug into an Ampeg or I plug into my orange rig, it's all going to be similar enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it obviously responds differently. and But you basically are getting the same sound. And... I take the DI off of that. Front of house is getting the same tone every night. I know what they're getting, and I know that I like it. Right, right. That was the thing with that. That yeah, was yeah. it was like a utility thing. <coughs> right. Now my my thing has been like finding a rig that that's cool for both, like that I can double on. Like yeah. Last night I was playing, and I had both of them with me, and it's just a quick, you know. What What do you mean? Um, the same head. Oh, okay. Same cab, just like plug in the upright. Just oh yeah. This. Oh yeah, yeah. Follow tune. I want to play electric on. Oh, that's fucking dope. What are you using? Uh, I have an Epiphany Ultra Light 112. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I know that sound. GK. Uh, I think the the little tagline is. Is that the little? Is that the little baby hen? Yeah. 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 The yeah. little. little Five hundred water. Yeah. Yeah. I just got one of those uh, Fender ones. The, the Rumble. Was yeah. One? Dude, that thing's fucking dope. <laughs> yeah. It's cheap as shit. <laughs> Holy shit, man. And it weighs like five pounds. It's a little, it's bigger than that, that GK one. But, dude, I still threw in my fucking no, luggage and, yeah. and took it to Canada with me, dude. And it was fucking great. Yeah, no, I play gigs. Like, if I'm playing a gig and I'm just going direct, it's just like the electric in the head. In the little, yeah. Know? And I, I got it in like a laptop carrying bag. That's fucking great, it's dude. The whole, it's the whole rig. I love that shit. Yeah. Orange, but I. I How long you been with them? I've been with Orange for four years. You know, shout out to my dogs at Orange. Gia. Um, we're we're gonna talk about how you got your toenails painted orange when you got the endorsement. Fuck yeah, dude, yeah. dude, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not coming at you. I'm just, dude. We need to talk about it. Uh, I've I've been, been with them for fuck over four, four years. It'll be four years South by Southwest. The yeah. the rep approached me, Alex over there, who's super fucking cool. Like, he was like, yo, like we don't give shit away for free. 
you know what I mean? We're not that company. It's bigger company, but still boutique. But they, right. you know what I mean? It's like, we'll give you artist pricing. It's like, dude, if you need help, we'll, we'll help you. Okay. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll fucking, we'll promote you. You promote us kind of thing. And yeah, yeah, of everything that they said that they've done, they do. He's like, I email him. I get an email back within 20 minutes oh, always. Fuck. And it's like, hey man, you know, like he always sorts out backline when we're overseas. Okay. And the shit's great. So you know what I mean? then you always know you're walking into an orange boy. Like, yes. Okay. That's, yes. That's dope. Yes. Well, eight out of ten times. Okay. Sometimes, like it backline, you tell them what you want, and then you just show up, and there's still a fucking uh, shitty SVT classic and a beat up ass A10. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and you're like, and it's not like the good SVT classic; it's the black face, like right, the, I know. yeah, the ones where you're like, oh fuck, right. I know this is gonna sound like shit. Right. It's you like, know what I mean? Yeah, it's like the rig that every rehearsal space yes. has. In their big room. Right, right. <laughs> it's like, dude, it's the big boy room one. You right. know what I mean? So, uh, oh, what's that spot? What's that spot over uh, on Santa Monica Cascade? Oh, been in the big room over there. Too? Oh yeah, but the dude, I don't. It's not happening. I haven't been in there in years. I thought they had an old G. I thought they had a GK eight hundred in there. Now I was there. Dude, that's still it's one of my favorite heads. I got yeah. two of those like late eighties ones. Okay. Dude, those fucking like that in my opinion is like the best head that GK made because I don't like tube heads. Okay. The orange they they brought out a solid state amp. Yeah. Like right when the rep approached me, because I was using GK. Okay. I was using eight hundreds and ampe caps. Okay. Because I don't GK. Four ten. The eight tens. Okay. Uh, I I what never. Were you, what were you using for anything in ten? Oh, I had a four ten. Yeah. An right. ampe four ten. No, who's gonna bring an eight ten? I'm not. Yeah. Fuck man, I can't carry that yeah, shit. Playing too on hard. the rocks, you gotta go up the steps with us. Dude. <laughs> man, I I I fucking. Dude, now I'm just like, find me something, the smallest fucking cabinet. You know what I mean? Dude, right. Um, where the hell were we going with that? Oh, the GK shit. Dude, that 800 fucking smokes, man. Yeah. Smokes. It's the best head that GK's made. Yeah. Never, never really was super into their cabinets, though. Okay. Dude, the cabinets... Uh, it's for, for the I way, here's the thing for the way that I play, they sound great, but like when you start getting like real hard and you start playing real staccato and you give it they hell, like you get this, yeah, overdrive, like same, my same problem with, with Aguilar, those, okay. those, really? those cabinets, man. Yeah, dude, they're like super hi-fi and like it gets farty and it doesn't have the definition. See, I only, I only found that with GK. Really? Yeah. I, I've had the same thing with Aguilar, and they make great shit, but it just never worked for me. Huh. The orange shit's great, but dude, if you those fucking four, I got a, I've got a couple of the four tens and stack those. Oh yeah, well, done. But one of those four tens, like, dude, it handles better than an Ampeg eight ten does. But dude, those fucking cabinets are like eighty fucking ply, and they weigh like ninety five <laughs> pounds. Like the four tens are like ninety five pounds a piece. That's insane. No neos. It's like, dude, they're, you know what I mean? It's right. like it's the. But that shit makes a difference, man. Oh, yeah. For sure. Right. Sam, you know Sam. Yeah. Sam was like, oh, no, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam was telling me that, like, there's these Neo speakers. He's like, dude, you won't even know the difference. He's like, I'll, he's like, I'll trick you. And I'm like, nah, dude. <laughs> not going to happen. He's like, dude, I'm telling you. And you know what? He's probably right because he knows that's his fucking world. It's not dude, my I world. Just, uh, I just heard, this is maybe about a month ago, the Line 6 bought Ampeg. Oh, yeah. That happened back in, like, April last year. Yes. Yeah, and they're they're re uh, they're supposedly like right, revamping. Sam's actually like in the he's on the team, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it, the, for that like whatever what would it be fiftieth anniversary? SVT's like all hot rotted, and supposed to be more like the OG shit for okay. real. Yeah. I, Problem is that dude, nobody wants to lug around a ninety pound head, dog. No. I've got a fucking head that weighs five pounds that I could put my fucking suitcase that puts no, out no, like, more than enough power. Maybe maybe dude that you know. I mean, you know, what was it? Last year? Like, yeah, last year I was doing like seven to nine gigs a week. Like, Jesus. I was, it was, you know, it was great. Yeah. Work wise. But I got a little burnt out. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it was cool. But no, I wouldn't touch that. Like, no, man. No. Dude, what? Not when you got your fucking little laptop bag with a yeah. fucking base head yeah, in it, you yeah, know? Like, that happens. Or, like, worst case scenario, like, put the little uh, Epiphany on a cart. Yeah. Even with the upright, it's one trip from the car. It's great. Like, that's all I'm doing. Yeah, fuck yeah. Right, if it can't be done in one trip from the car, I'm not doing it. I don't blame you. Yeah, yeah dude. I want. Yeah, fuck that. I don't. I don't want because you know how it goes. You gotta like park, unload, then you gotta go find parking. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I'm not making two trips back. No, and fuck that. The car. No, no, no. Nobody wants that. <laughs> no, no. This is how lazy. That's why I told Sam. He's like, "What would you want like out of an Ampeg head?" I was like, "One that doesn't weigh a hundred fucking pounds." Yeah. 
Just make a fucking, just make a fucking all solid state amp. Like you don't, nobody gives a shit about two preamps. Nobody cares. They do. I mean, I'm not. I hope, I, I not. hope none of them ever make it onto this podcast. <laughs> I'm putting rules on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, dude. dude. And any, or, or you get to come on with them and just duke it out. Like, I'll walk away. Uh, dude, even better. I'm, I'm, Please, yeah. bring yeah, somebody in that's going to, like, give me the whole, like, well, yeah, but you still get – nobody gives a fuck, dude. <laughs> you don't know it front of house. You really don't. <laughs> Shit, man, I don't even need a rig, dude. Just give me the fucking Sans amp direct, dog. Who fucking cares? <laughs> you know the tone's in your hands, man, I, I and in the right instrument, yeah. you know? How old them strings on that fucking Lackland you got, Ooh, dude? Uh, they're old. Yeah. Have you changed them since the last time? Last time was two years ago or whatever. Yeah. No. Well, you know, one. So I play the half ones. I play the Dio Dario half ones. Yep, I've got a Nobody set of those, town, but but you yours is a five. I've got a four string set. If Nobody you want in them. town sells a five string set. Really? Yeah. Like not even the. I've bass. got I've got a Dio Dario deal. We can just order yeah. them on the website. Dude. We could do it when we're done. Yeah. Okay. Seriously. I'm down. Get artist cost too. It's way cheap. That's the thing. It's like I always, um, you know, like, okay, just go to Amazon, just buy them. Like, I'll think about that while I'm driving to a gig or something. And then. By the or time you I get should to just gig, leave your low B and I'll give you the other four strings. <laughs> <laughs> That's some ghetto shit, dog. Dude, I'm. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not ashamed to admit it, dude. I, I boil. I, I boil I, strings. Do you? Oh, yeah. I, I, like, I like the half wounds. I don't like the tension of them, though. And that's why I don't like the tension of the flats either. There's so much more fucking tension with it. You think? Yeah. I hate the new string sound. I hate the new string I sound as well. I use, like I I use nylons, in, bro. I can't get in. Like, when I was young, I remember seeing all these ads that Marcus uh, Miller was playing DR. Going, oh, yeah, I'm going to get that. Yeah. One. No. Like, I got one set, and I'm like, that is. Dude, you know, you know, do you know who does that too? Is fucking Roto Sound, dude. I haven't heard that. Those strings are fucking awesome. But they don't die, like they, they dude. What's the new string string where it's, Are they nickel or steel? Because steel is. Well, like, no, it's, dude, steel is. I don't like. I don't. I don't like playing steel. Yeah, like yeah. it's it's rougher. Those right. are. I think the rotos are nickel. I'm pretty sure, like the okay. standard rotos are. I think DRs are steel, and they're just so bright. Yeah, it. I can't. It hang. just doesn't go away. No, it doesn't. I love the Diodario shit though. Like if I could slap like Marcus, you know, like well then yeah, I'd want this really percussive. Yeah. Metallic thing. I don't do that. No. So I don't no, want no. that. Dude, you don't like the nylons? I had them on a fret rig. I, had I have them on, like, basically I everything. Yeah. I have a couple basses that have rounds on it. One that's in drop tune for that shit. And then other than that, like, one or two other basses. Everything's got nylons. Okay. You can get a five-string nylon set, and your boy might actually have. <laughs> cause I, I'll check them out. You should. I'll hook you up. Yeah. Less tension, I, too. I, okay. See, I... That that that's a weird one to me. Like I like the tension of the half wounds, yeah, and I'm so used to feeling that. Like dude, if it, the bass it, responds it, differently, it, like that's gonna it, weird it, me out. It, for it me. will, but it's way easier to play. Okay. Way not way easier to play, but you know what I mean. It's like it's a different thing. You'll feel it. Right, right. All right, I'll check it out. You still get the best. I'll we'll we'll, we'll order you a set of fucking. All right, we'll, we'll continue wounds. this geek out. Yeah. yeah. Post post fucking blog whatever. <laughs> shit. Yeah. Yeah, no, let's actually do it. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, we'll check them out. Yeah, yeah. Because I've got, I ordered a couple five-string sets because I was going to get all crazy and do some shit, and then I ended up you not. So five at all, too. No, but I was going to do a four-string with the five, uh, with the nylons, and I was like, ah, you know what, fuck it. So I just used the four. So I've got an extra low B that I didn't use, and then I've got a bunch of sets of the four strings. How come How come never five? Like, you know, I think I, when I met you, you were doing uh, – I was doing all that shit. I was doing all that shit with Lugo. No, no, no. You're all good right now. You are all good. Um, yeah, make sure the cat didn't get on the table. Again. Um, when I was doing all this stuff with Lugo, he had me playing that Ibanez five string. Dude, my fucking my ring finger, which I use on my right hand, I sometimes pivot in and get stuck in between the strings and <laughs> like not having the low E there. So, so what do you do? You 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 plant your ring finger and then you you toggle off that. That's Well no, well no, I play with three fingers, but like sometimes if I'm like playing higher up like I tuck this back and as opposed to my cat duty, sorry, I'm on cat duty. Right, um but like I didn't realize but sometimes I tuck this finger in or like I'll do it to push the string out of the way whatever I do, my finger would get fucking stuck. In oh, between the right, strings, right. yeah, and it, there's, and that's the thing too is it's like the the room in between strings. Like I'm using, sure. like those road worns are fifties reissues, you know. Okay. And dude, those necks are like super wide, so you're yeah, str yeah. there's more string room, dude. 
So put me on a five string. It's a complete opposite of With that. With that spacing. Yeah. Like, I've had students who wanted to convert, man. I always. I always tell them to start out with an Ibanez. Like, the string spacing is closer, mm -hmm. uh, and the neck's smaller. Yeah. But if you take the same spacing from, like, a four and, and put, put it, it on a five, it's, it's too much. Yeah, yeah. of course. Like, but I'm, I'm really I'm – super, I'm super nerd about string spacing. Yeah. I, 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 I can't – I can't do the five. I yeah. just, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I just never got it, huh? No. I mean, I kind of feel like that with the six. Like, dude, I played, I, a, I played a seven string bass, and yeah. dude, it was like, if, it, it was as if I had grabbed an upright because I didn't know what to do <laughs> with it. Nothing, right. Dude, it was like a washboard. I was like, I could fucking do my laundry on this yeah. motherfucker. This is insane. You want to do mine too? Yeah, sure, yeah. dude. On, I got a fucking seven string I'll over bring, at you, fucking yeah, you bring Guitar on the seven Center. String, I'll get the whites. We'll just go for it. Dude. That would be a fucking trip. You know what I got, though? I got a fucking Steinberger five-string. Really? Um, you know what? It's headless, and people like have like this preconceived notion that because it's headless, it sucks, and it's lame. That guitar sounds so – it like for what it is, it's a fucking 18-volt preamp. It sounds really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's the one five-string that I have now. Okay. I, I had don't their electric upright for a while. Really? Yeah. How was it? It was cool. I, like, I put actual upright strings on it. Okay. Because they come with these Diodario hybrid strings. Okay, I got you. Um, not the Diodario hybrid. Cause, like, that's another thing on upright. The hybrid is, like, for bowing and... Oh, gotcha, yeah, yeah. It has yeah, to yeah. do with the dampening. Uh, yeah. It, it wasn't those. I put normal jazz upright strings on nice. it. Nice. Uh, it got a better sound. And what I liked it for is, like, musically. Oh, cool. You know? Yeah. Like... No, I don't know, dude. I've never done a musical. <laughs> <laughs> like there's no there's no space like, yeah yeah the pit, so like i'd be backstage yeah you know and like there'd be a monitor feed to the piano yeah, player who's conducting at the same time uh and so it worked for that because of space right? yeah that's, what, that's cool yeah no Other the that, sign like, dude that that fucking thing sounds rad though it's still really really weird to play right. you, got, yeah. you got nylons on no 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 i've got i've got rounds i i to be honest with you i don't think you can get nylons for it because it's the double ball end oh, strings right, right. And I don't know how to change the strings on it or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got these jank asshole strings on there, dude. It's fucking sick. I like it. So who else? So you were, were you endorsed by Schecter for a minute? Oh, my God. Uh, that was way back in the day. Dude, like that was like the first endorsement that I ever got. Okay. Yeah. I was just using those Robert DeLeo Model T, the P bass, P and J basses. Right, right. Heavy, heavy basses. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know much about like swapping pickups out on them. Okay. I never really liked the way it sounded. Yeah, like but they make good, too, right? Uh, yeah, no, it was rad. You know what? Actually, they get a bad rap too, man. And their their quality of shit's actually good. Like all that stuff's being like all the shit that's being made over their their American shit's great. Okay. But all the shit that's being made overseas is the same place that like I think Guild and all those other like. All the it's all being made in the same factory. Oh really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I don't know much about the company. I mean, I know like I think the guy who owns MI like owns Schecter. I think it's the same dude. I think they own Schecter, and I think they There's also own one. ESP. Yeah, yeah. And like ESP and Schecter like are like competition, but are owned by the same person. Which is genius. Yeah. If you create your own competition, you get all the money. It, this is true. Yeah. This is true. It's like the dude who you know, like if McDonald's from McDonald's. Yeah. Owned Burger King. Yeah. Like, or a genius. Or fender owned Gibson or vice versa, yeah, you know? Right. That's the way to do it. Dude, that's crazy. I love gear, man. I fucking love gear. I, yeah. I, I, Dog, it's it's a deep, it, dark. It's better that I you know, don't because. I I, I, but when I get obsessed with something, like, I'm about to start modding my Lakeland. And so. What are you, you going to mod it with? Oh, dude. Oh, that's a whole nother. That's a whole nother four hour conversation. Okay. This is. That's dark. I'm sad, like I want to send the body to MJT and have them relic it and refinish it. And oh, nice! Get it refretted. What the hell is MJT? Um, oh man, you haven't seen like you can either buy a prefab body. Is that what Dan probably, got? Yeah. Uh, no, no, he, he got. He, no. he got. He, he made his. Yeah. He did his himself. Um, but he was showing me this company. I love I want, their relic work, and I want to get it refinished. I want to. See, I'm putting this in the phone right now because I'm going to check them out. They're great. MJT. MJT. Yeah. MJ I've been checking out their stuff and like I uh I got the, the that Lakeland, I got that as a wedding gift from a R homie in Really? Vegas. Yeah. And Dude, now, that's amazing. And now uh I don't have the friend anymore and I don't have the wife anymore. So I'm like, you know, the base needs to change. 
Yeah. It's it's that that's where I'm at with yeah. it. That's why I'm doing it. And it's a fun project. Oh, it's fun, dude. Yeah. I love that shit. Yeah, so I'm like I'm obsessing about pickups and preamps and like what, what pickups are you looking at? Um, I forgot the exact model number. A uh, an Aguilar in the front. Sick. And then there's this company, man. I've been checking it out. I can't pronounce it. I'll show you. It's <coughs> it's a humbucker, like the music man yeah. I have. But the the magnet pieces. The, you got two rows, right? So you got yeah. the, the fatter ones like a music man, and then it's got like two per string. Yeah. Like a jazz pickup, on the back half of it. Yeah, yeah. And you can still slit it, and I'm like, oh, it's sick. Trying to, I'm thinking about some weird, crazy you're gonna uh, get, wiring you're things, and I've been checking out my little preamps and how I can get all that in there. It's sick, dude. Yeah. I'm doing a, I'm doing a project bass as well. I got a P bass body, like a P special, so it's got precision and jazz. And I got a, I just got a fretless neck for it. From where? Fender. Okay. Just Fender. Just uh, I got one of the jazz, Mexi jazz fretless necks. Okay. And um. And dude, I never fucking thought of this before. Same thing. I'm doing tone stack knobs for the precision in jazz. Like yeah. like the old jazz basses right. that have like the volume and tone for each. Why can't you do that with the precision in jazz? Okay. I don't know why they haven't So what's the what's the stock wiring on it? That's gonna be volume tone for precision, volume tone for jazz. Each okay. each have their own dedicated tone right knob now. as opposed. No, that's what's going to be. I'm that's what you're going to. Right? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to throw. Uh, and you're keeping it. Packed. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm going to throw this this rad fucking pickup made by this dude out in Pittsburgh. JW Restoration. He does like guitar restorations for like vintage guitars and stuff. And dude, he hand wound me these fucking pickups that are insane. P. Yeah, P pickup. And then and then I'm just going to fucking. I uh, just got some like old. I don't even know the, the original jazz pickup that was in there. So some Mexi jazz pickup. Right, right. I, I don't really care much for the jazz pickup. It'll be cool to be able to like throw a little bit of the jazz in there and roll a shit ton of tone off. So it doesn't yeah. have that snappy thing. Like that's, sure. that's, that was always my problem with the P specials is like, once you start putting that jazz pickup in, you really do lose a lot of low end. And it's, I, I don't necessarily want all that articulation from it, especially on a fucking oh, fretless. See, I'm into it, man. Like right now, I can uh, I can split the coils on the Music Man in the back. <sighs> I split it to just the bridge. Nice. Like that, and then just like creep in a little bit on the pan of the neck. Oh, I dude, guess. that's yeah, that's but sick. But I want I want the yeah you I want, want the nasally uh, yeah exactly thing. Like but I, I want to be able to do that too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I want to have all the options. So having a dedicated volume and tone for each pickup just fucking makes sense. Right, right. I don't know why Fender got rid of that. Like, that was the original jazz bass, and they did that for, like, a year and a half or two years in 61 and 62, and then they went to two-volume, one-tone on the so, jazz. So say it again. You're going for volume, tone, volume, tone, stack, and then are you doing a pan? No. No pan? No. Just in the okay. Yep, volume, tone, volume, tone. Right, I guess you don't need a pan. No. I like the pan. I rewired a jazz bass one time. With really? Like, with a master volume and a pan and a master tone. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was all right. I mean, I don't, I, I don't really, I, I play P bases anyway, so like I'm uh, you, used to just, just having one. one shot, yeah, yeah I, 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 and I use my, I really use my tone knob a lot. Okay. You know what I mean? I utilize that to the max. Right. I got sick of like, this one's this much and this one's yeah. that one. Just give me a pan. Smart. That actually makes more sense. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I remember there being some, uh, I, was, I was talking to the repair guy at the shop I was working at at the time. Yeah. I was young. I was like 20 years old when I decided to do this. Like, all of a sudden, I'm going to outthink Leo Fender. You know, like I'm... Dog, we had this right. conversation already. <laughs> I can't. Right. Full tilt, dog. You can't <laughs> fuck with Leo. You know? Right, but I think you know, I'm 20 years old. I'm like, nah, I got this. You I fucking know this. everything at 20, no, dog. I, I had it all the way together. <laughs> Dude. Um, uh, there's a little bit of... Uh, there's a little bit of signal loss. Like yeah. That's, who fucking cares? Yeah. Yet again, dude, it's that shit like it was two. Worth doing. It was a fun experience. Like a two fucking preamp on a fucking bass head. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody's gonna right. know. So, you know, somebody's not gonna listen. And be like, you know what? Ryan's tone would be so much better if there wasn't any signal loss from that fucking pan knob that he put in there. <laughs> Said nobody ever. Right. You know what I mean? Maybe a fucking luthier would tell you, be like, hey man, you know you got a little <clears throat> signal loss. But like, yeah man, still fucking paid my bills last month. So what's right. up, dog? Right. That's the shit. Yet again, like I don't. Know. The the purest thing. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't really. Care. I, I kind of like. I kind of like shit being ghetto anyway. Like I like having to fight it a little bit. Okay. You know. Right. You know what I did play and surprised me. Uh, when I was at Nam, I was with a buddy of mine, and he's he's good buddies with everybody at Dingwall. They do like the fan frets, yeah. and they have the whole thing. 
I've Dude. never played a frame set thing. It's actually easier than you think. I had not before this either. But, dude, there's a uh, – they had one that was a P&J. Okay. Holy fuck. It, it, it was, like, hot-rotted to shit from, like, a regular P special. Right. But, dude, it sounded fucking great. Passive, yeah. but, like, super hot. <clears throat> but the fan fret thing was weird. And then, you know, they were explaining to me, it's like, well, you know, like, you know, having, like, the tension. You know what I mean? It's like you need more tension on uh, – on a E string than you do on a G string. You know what I mean? It's just better for intonation and all that shit. And like the natural, whatever he was explaining it to me. And it was fucking crazy. Yeah. I, yeah I've never read about the, the science behind it, but it's much better for tension of the string and intonation. You know what I mean? Like, okay. yeah. And it makes because, sense. It's just I would weird. Think that, like the same, uh, the same distance between hat steps would always be there. Like, yeah. Uh, without, I never. I, I guess I never thought about tension in relation to that mask. Yeah, exactly. I, I I just didn't think about it, so I didn't understand the fan fret thing. It it looks goofy to me. Looks That's goofy. It, it's definitely goofy looking. Sure. But man, it, it it I mean, it was definitely weird to play. But like, you don't if you don't look down and you just play, you don't really notice it. Okay. But it's like when you look down, you're like, oh shit, what the <laughs> fuck is this? You're like, you know, yeah. if like. If you're going to go play like a fucking octave, you know what I mean? Right. And you're of your fucking G, you're like, cool cat. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. What is this, man? It's fucking weird. Yeah, that's what that's what it was like. The, fr like the first five string I got, I had a gig like a couple days later. And like if I looked at the bass, I, I was lost. Dude. Because like visually, I just, I, then I'd have to like think it through real quick. Yeah. If I had to look at it. I was, I was it's bad wrong. news. Yeah. It's fucking bad news. Yeah. And, well, so the moral of the story bad news is just not practicing on the instrument. Before well, you go to there, a there's yeah. that. I, I mean, but the ultimate bad news is playing a five string. <laughs> <laughs> Hear that, kids? Yeah. Leo Fender didn't invent the five string. Oh, jeez, here we go. So you're a purist. You can't. You can't talk shit on the purist. It's true. I am yeah, a purist. Now you're. Now you're a hypocrite. It's true, yeah. but, but I'm allowed to be because it's me. Yeah. Well, there you go. And it's fucking. That, that's exactly what two amp guys thinking. Yeah, but they're fucking bozos. <laughs> I'm kidding. I mean, I get, you know what? It's not tube amps. Like, if, if tube amp is your thing, like tube, like tube amp, tube preamp, two totally different things for me. Like, if somebody's like, oh, well, you know, like, this is better because, you know, you really get that tube warmth, but you're using a solid state amp. It's like you're using a fucking solid state amp. It's like, if you want that tone, like, you cannot recreate the sound of an SVT with fucking six or eight whatever 6550 tubes in there right. you cannot emulate the m amount of shit that that gives you when you're hitting those tubes right, right. you just can't right. and it's a fucking rad tone yeah that i will never fight anybody on but sure. a two preamp in a solid state amp is that's where i go to fisticuffs you know what <laughs> i mean okay all right that's 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 where we go so please find somebody so i can punish them on the next fucking podcast <laughs> Man, but th that was Man, I probably seem like such an asshole no, right now. I love it. Passion, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Passion. <laughs> Full tilt. Fuck, fuck your two preamps in your solid state amps, but you know what? Leo Fender. Dude, but that's like, Bam. That's, that's the Eden thing. That's the David Eden thing, man. They got the two pre. Yeah, well, yeah. Ampeg did it too. Yeah. It's fucking awful. I had like. I played a Metro for a while, the 210 combo. I like that amp. The Eden shit was actually cool, man. I hadn't had much experience to it, and then I borrowed one from Sam. Right. And dude. No, I think. Yeah, th that was. I sold that to him. Yeah, dude, that fucking thing was awesome. I yeah. borrowed it for a couple gigs years ago because when my shocker of my well, SVT he, he was must down. Have fixed it because I remember going out on the road with that and there was some kind of issue. I mean, Sam fixes everything, right, dude. Right. But he wouldn't just fix it for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he had to make it his first and then fix yeah. it. Yeah. Dude, but uh, but that, that, that head was great. That head was fucking did, great. Did you, did you, okay, did you use just his head? He's got a World Tour 800 head. And then I think I sold him the Metro, the 210 combo. I did not use the cabinet. I used my cab. Okay, so yeah. then that was just the head. I don't know what yeah. he did with the combo amp. I mean, dude, that was like 10 years ago that I've... Think about it. No, yeah. no. When did I do that? That was like, it's like 2016. No, 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 dude. This was like, this was no joke like 10 years ago. Oh, okay. He had an Eden head. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, that. But it, it was him dope. And I are funny with gear because I bought. I think I bought that off him for a little bit. <laughs> and then like. Well, me and Dan just did fucking a bunch of gear swapping and all kinds of shit. I was just yeah. like, sold him this guitar and I was like, dude. And then I got like. Oh, I remember hearing about that. Sellers yeah. remorse and I was like, I need that back. Oh, what was the guitar? 
uh, 83 Strat that's like super unusable for anything. Right, but it, didn't he have like some personal interest? It was like the same guitar in the same color as like one of his first. Or no, he had, he had gotten a guitar originally, okay. and then I we done a trade, and then I sold it back to him, and then I wanted it back, so I traded him <laughs> again for it, and I just got that back a couple months ago. I was like, are you using that Strat? He goes, no, nah, man. He's like, I've tried to. It's a very particular Strat. It has a very particular sound. Okay. And I actually don't like Strats. I like Tele's more than Strats. Yeah, yeah, me too. But this is the most Telecaster sounding Strat because it, it isn't all routed out for the uh, for the tremolo system and shit. So it's like solid body Strat. Right, right. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. That's where, that's, okay. that's where it's at. So, yeah. Anyway, it, me and Dan have done that for sure where we like fucking gear swap and then trade other shit and all kinds of shit yeah, yeah. all the shit dude <laughs> it's fucking great so, so your go-to rig now is the road worn through an orange no the the new setup is that 75 i got this really that oh, beat up that, yeah, yeah. that beat up 75 right, i got that needed a little that needed a little attention i remember i saw you oh you saw it right after i got yeah, it you just got it yeah no i got that fixed up that's my main that's my main touring piece now okay it's getting beat the shit so that with the orange sand tap nice yeah all right yeah. So you're doing more. What do you What do you take to the studio? You're doing a lot more sessions now. You said. Oh, dude, I've got. Uh, dude, actually, the the fretless I'm using is a Squire P fretless, because there's o the only way to get a precision fretless is either that or the Tony Franklin. There's no in between. Really? Yep. There's no like Mexican Fender version. I didn't want a jazz. I wanted a P. Right. So I ordered that shit off Amazon and came and dude, out of the box. Probably the only time, like, dude, I didn't fuck with that bass at all. I threw nylons on it, and, dude, it's been the same since. <laughs> and it's fucking, dude, it's great. So I got that. I've got uh, I got this Epiphone Zenith fretless, big, hollow body, weighs like 8,000 pounds fretless. Okay. Uh, taking the 75s, the Roadworn. Roadworn does a lot of the main tracking. And then we've also got, like, when I'm working with Jim all the time, he's got a 66 J bass that, dude. With the lollipop tuners and the whole shit, dude. dude. I love the lollipop tuners. Dude. I love Like, that's going on my life in mod. Oh. Like, the hip shot lollipop. Because they dude. got the ultralight Dude, lollipop. that's the move. Yeah. It, dude, there's nothing classier than a jazz bass with love that. Love it. Love it. And then, uh, and then we got a 74 down there. Dude, there's, it's like fucking, there's so much fucking, yeah, I take way too much shit. Right. It depends on what I'm doing, too. Like, if I'm going in to do a fucking, like, a record record, <coughs> man, I've got, like, half my fucking shit there. I've got way too much shit there. Okay. Or not enough, I mean. Sorry. At at the studio. No, no, no. I'm just talking about in life. I have, oh. <laughs> I have, I don't have enough yet. I love gear, man. I'm not, I'm not. I don't know why I never got that thing. Like, it. I, dude, it's been more recent. I used to never be like this. Yeah. I don't know what happened, dude. I just started like I want vintage shit, and like I said, now I want all the Leo Fender shit. Like I want right. the the eighty one G and L. They got the L one thousand. That thing's dope, dude. It's just a fucking humbucker, in the front. Right. That's it. Yeah. Fucking awesome. And it's so disgusting. It sounds like I played one and it sounded like flea on blood sugar sex magic. Okay. Like but the wall bass tone, not the music man. Right. Because that's mostly wall bass on that record. Mm -hmm. And dude, it sounded like that. Yeah. And it was fucking just obnoxious, but fat and punchy. I was like, Yep, need one of those. See, I was thinking about just building one, right? Like total project based. Not not from scratch, scratch like buy a prefab body. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I, w I wanted to do two jazz pickups on the bridge, really close to each other. And yeah, I've seen seen a lot of like boot boutique makers that are doing this. Uh, Warwick had the bass. Yeah, where they're just both right there, and like man, that'd be cool. And then I was talking to Dan about it. Yeah, and Dan was like, well, what about phase cancellation? I'm like, oh, good point. Yeah, true. So then I went down this rabbit hole. I'm reading, you know, this is like a week and a half. <laughs> Spending all this time like. You know, yeah, what's, what's everybody talking about with the phase cancellation? Yeah. Apparently on a jazz bass, when they're full, both full, fully trained, there's phase cancellation. Really? It's just, that yeah, just exists on every jazz bass. Well, then I'm thinking like, all right, screw it. Yeah. That's fine. Why not? Yeah. Right. Yet and again, man. Already, like, If it's already going on, you know, well, I'll join I, the race. I mean, but that makes sense. You know what I right. mean? Right. But I mean, I can't think of a time where I played a jazz bass and have had both pickups. Oh, dude, I've got fucking demos for you from when I was, like, 15, dude. I I'll show you otherwise, dog. My first Fender was a jazz bass, dude. Really? Still have it, yeah. What was your first bass? What was your absolute first bass? Uh, it was it was a short-scale bass, and when I got it from my buddy, it, it like, the, the nut had broken at the G-string, so it only had three strings on it. 
my dad being a fucking really, really, really great guy, got a new nut for it, but didn't file it down because he wanted me to like earn my fucking keep. <laughs> so I'm playing a fucking short scale bass with an unfiled nut. Dude, like you could fucking put your finger in between it and didn't know. And I played that bass for six fucking months. Like, and then I got like an Ibanez PJ knockoff. Okay. Dude, when I got that thing, I was like, oh my God, dude, you, yeah. I could play. Yeah. Like, like dude, those, because uh, I'm like the sound gears. No, it wasn't a sound gear. Okay. It was a TR something or the RBX. No, it's TR something. I still have it. There's a TRB, but I don't No. Those were active. No, this was passive. Huh. It was, it was like definitely a fender knockoff. Okay. And dude, and then I got on that and it was like, I could fly. Yeah. Because I wasn't playing a bass so, with so it. Oh, training. Dude, that was, that was his training. Is that, is that weird? Cause like when you play, you dig in. Yeah. Like you dig I think, in well, that's how my dad plays. But yeah, I think right. that like his whole thing was like, yeah, fuck it, dude. Here you go. Right. Boot camp. He's like, yeah. play this. And then like, and he didn't tell me this till after, but he's like, yeah, man. He's like, if you could play that when you go from there, it's like, anything's hey, going to be going. easier. Okay. So the short scale. <laughs> Short scale with an unfiled nut, love dude. It, it. it was brutal, yeah. dog. Brutal. Mine was a, a P. It was a PV Fury. Like <gasps> the, the, the lowest model yep. PV yep. bass. Yep. Uh, yeah, from a pawn shop. So, yep. the, like, in retrospect, I don't know. The neck might have been all kinds of warped. Oh, probably. I don't know. I, like, I had that bass for, uh, man, how long did I have that bass for? Because then the next, like, the very next bass... And I was like 15 or 16. So I thought PV was like, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm into yeah. this. You yeah. Know? So then I got a PV accelerator fretless. Oh, shit. Said, which is a total active. I think yeah. 18 volt preamp. Yeah, yeah. yeah fretless. And like. Dude, you went straight I, for the jugular, <laughs> dude. <laughs> and then like, and then took that back and got the fretted version of it. Yeah. I just could not. No. I couldn't navigate a fretless. I didn't Fuck know no. Was, I loved the sound. Yeah. But I didn't know. No, dude, like you're I'm not. still learning the instrument, you know? Like, yeah, but no, dude, you, you don't, don't need that. No. No. no, fuck no. No. I mean, yeah, no, fuck that. Right. No. But that's, and then I've had different fretlesses over the years. I really want one again. I'd love to be the guy where I'm just like, I'm just a fretless player. Like, that's my thing. Like, dude, that's, that's kind of where I'm trying to go, man. I, 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 I use it a lot on recording now. Yeah. And yeah, dude, it's fucking great. Yeah. If there's anywhere you're going to play whole notes, you might as well play it on a fretless. Right. Because it sounds cooler. Yeah, absolutely. And nothing sounds fucking more bitching than fuzzing the shit out of it and playing some fucking shit. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, it's it's fucking dope. Yeah. Fretless is sick, dude. I agree. Yeah, I want more fretless shit. Yeah. I want more basses. <laughs> you want more? I what do you more. got? How many you got? I don't know. Really? Yeah. That's hilarious. I, I mean, I kind of do. I have an idea. Dude, there's so much shit floating around, though, because, like, I give shit to people, and then, like, you forget about right, it. Right, and right. then, I'm like, I don't know, like. Not including guitars, but like basses. I think like fourteen. Okay, fifteen. Yeah, yeah I have Something two. Like They're that. both right over there. Yeah, one's electric and the other one's an upright. Damn, dog. I might, have to, I, do. I might have to lend you a fretless, dude. No, I'm a. Uh, yeah, no, maybe. I, mean, I don't want the Squire one. No, that Gene, it's dope. But they don't, they don't make that anymore. Oh. It's active as fuck, too. Actually, you know what? I'll lend it to you because it's got two outputs and shit. I don't know what the fuck it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That thing's dope, though. It's really cool. It weighs like 5,000 fucking pounds. Dude, I, the fretless I wish I still had was, we were talking about this, the Music Man. Yeah. I forgot what year it was, like mid-80s, I think. It was amazing. Oh, it's fucking great. That. Yeah, I love that bass. Yeah. yeah. That sucks that you don't have that. Yeah. Did, yeah. It, have, did it have the uh, rubber mutes on it? No. It didn't. It didn't. Okay. That was Here's, I was trying to think of what happened to that bass. This is what happened. I had a bunch of basses stolen from my car. Yeah. The, the Steinberg electric upright. I had an MTD American oh, wow. yeah. five-string. Watch out. Cat duty. <laughs> Don't make it too big. Cat's back on the table. Uh, so I got a bunch stolen out of my car, and then the only thing I had left was a fretless. And I was doing a bunch of cover gigs. Yeah. I was like, ah, like this doesn't seem like the appropriate thing. Yeah. You know, which is funny because now all I want to do is that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but at the time, like, I can't do that on a fretless. So I traded it. Uh, ah, to the manager sucks. of the shop I was teaching at for his uh, Japanese 75 Ryuichi. It's like the Marcus Miller yeah. bass, but without the preamp. Yeah, yeah. No, it's great. Um, and then that was the one I started just going for and kind of hacking at it. Yeah. Trying different things. So you only have one bass? Yeah, that's what I do. Really? Yeah. Like you don't I'm even have into it. I'm you, you I don't want a P. I want a P. I was going to say, you don't even have Eric's a precision? Got that, Eric's got that red P. I want that red Dude, that bass sucks. Really? Yeah, I hate that bass. Shut your mouth. I love that bass. I hate that bass. No, it's so that's dark. No. 
And then you're not, what, what song do you like? I hate that bass. I hate the way it plays. <laughs> I hate the way it sounds. Go over, go over and play the fucking, I got a road worn over there right now. Okay. Go over there and play that. All right. You, trust me. You'll thank me. I don't know where that, I don't know what that, is that, is the red one Japanese or is it Mexican? Uh, that's the, that's the Nate Mandel, the dude from Foo Fighters signature. I think that's, I think that's Mexi. Okay. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I hate it. I hate playing it. Really? I love the way it looks. It's a mid seventies. Yeah. It's like it's a 70, a cool look. 75. It looks fucking great. Yeah. Doesn't that one, that one in it's particular. Been block a couple times. It's got some. That one, he, that thing needs, maybe, you know what, maybe if it had a good setup, dude, because the neck on that's all fucking bowed and it just sucks. Oh, see, I haven't, I haven't looked into that. I remember playing it on a gig a couple of years ago. Um, it was probably better then. It's not so good now. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine. You need a P bass. I, that's I, yeah, sad. I feel like I need a P bass. That's, that's you, everybody should have a P bass. Uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, that's, that's like, that's your job as a bass player to have a precision have bass. A P, yeah. yeah, I could, I could do with one. Road worn. They're great. Everybody's. I was back in Phoenix hanging out with a friend of mine, and he's a guitar player, and he's got this whole wall of guitars. Yeah. You know, and I think the only bass he had was a Roadborne P, so I picked it up and I'm playing. It felt good. Dude, they, they're fucking – it's – dude, it's – I didn't like his setup on it. So if, yeah. Adam's, if Adam's listening, set up your P bass better. Yo, Adam, your shit's weak, dog. Yeah. Sorry. Not sorry. Fix your shit. Add Greg Cash on Instagram. Dude, Adam, what's up, dude? Out. Hit them hot DMs, dude. <laughs> I'll make sure, dude. I'll make sure to check the, uh, the fucking request folder. Yeah. I'll prove everybody. Let's go. Game on. Game on. Dude. I want people to hit me up. It's bullshit. I really hope somebody listens to all of this. The whole thing? Yes. Dude, if I can find the lost. You will. The, the lost guy and figure out how to you know, sync that up. Let's have Dan do it, dude. Dan can figure all that shit out. As no, far this as far as Pro Tools. Oh. Yeah, you better figure it out. <laughs> yeah, we exactly. got a lot. We got a lot of magic in there. Oh, th that first take was great, and then then Kitty jumped on the table and. No, I, I mean we still got a bunch of good shit, but there was some uh, good shit. In the first we were, shit. Yeah. We just could have been the best you and I have ever spoken to each other. Yeah, I and think I'm okay. I'm completely okay to talk that up so much and then never put it up. That's true. Just just let everybody feel like they're missing out on I'll, something, I, dude. It was fucking great. Well, I think it's probably because both of us aren't drunk. <laughs> you know what I mean. I feel like a lot of time that, like, if either I show up late or Ryan shows up late, that the other party is drunk. Because <laughs> then it's the, like, oh, man, I'm on the base. Yes, it's awesome. We're rarely, we're rarely at the same place. At the same, but this is a thing with bass players. Like, there's so many dudes I know in L.A. Yeah. You're, you're, I see you probably the most out of any other bass player I see. That's crazy. I don't see you that often. Exactly. So there's, like, all kinds of Then again, of I'm trying to think, like, I don't really – that's true. I don't really see other bass players because we're bass players. We're on gigs. Right. Exactly. Or if it's like some off night and we're going to see some friends hang, like you and I are completely in different circles. True that. So we're not, we're not well, hitting the Well, I spots. mean, but Eric and Dan and shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's all that. Yeah, I mean, but that's that's the same circle. Right, that one is. But like musically. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Like, oh, the music, yeah. Right. But I don't even really go out anyway. I don't. I don't at all. I mean, if I go out, and like, I don't know. I don't know what that's doing to me because when I do go out, I'm just over it. Like, I don't want to talk to people. I don't want to deal with. Well, like, maybe that's why we don't go out because we don't want to deal with people. Oh, like, it's it's kind of the worst. Like, I was getting dinner earlier tonight. Yeah. And I get there and I'm just like, I just like I'm like some crotchety old man. Yeah. Just complaining about all of it. Fuck yeah, because yeah. it sucks. And I'm just like, and I, and I I I've talked about it. I'm like, I don't go out a lot. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm by myself more often than not. Yeah. I get inside my own head, and I can just do whatever I want. And Dude, like, nobody can tell you no, bro. Exactly, exactly. Then all of a sudden, I have to go out into the public. I'm uh, like, ah, geez. Yeah, it's, this it's, again? It's a bunch of bullshit. We're still doing this? Yeah. Why? We shouldn't be. No. No, dude, this is what Postmates and all that shit's for, dude. I'm just yeah, fucking, that's pretty solid. I don't know. I, I, I do enjoy going out sometimes, but like, and again, not really. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I used to go out a lot more than I do now, yeah, which is great. It saves me a lot of money. Same, complete same. Right? Yeah. I mean, minus running into you last week. When I, was, <laughs> oh, I had a few drinks. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan saw me go over to Edge. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. That was a good time. Yeah. <laughs> dude. That was a week ago. That was, like, what happened? That seems like it was three weeks ago. Dude, I fucking, in that time, fucking got really drunk, had a two-day hangover, moved during that two-day hangover, and have I, been working. Right. You were, you were working, or excuse me, you were uh, moving earlier today. How much more work you got there? I, well, no, no. We moved. We did the bulk of it on tuesday i had to go do some shit at my other apartment it's this is now just like 
going to fucking Target and getting shit and like unloading the last little bit of boxes and just now like I unloaded I unloaded a lot of shit and I don't know where I put anything Uh. because I was just doing it in a hurry just to get all the boxes out because I fucking hate having moving boxes around (laughs) it's like I want to come home from work and like you know what I mean? You're in the fucking studio all day. It's like, I want to come home and I don't want there to be fucking boxes around. Yeah. So now I'm trying to find shit because I don't know where I put everything. Because yeah. just in a fury. That's one of my biggest pet peeves is when you're looking for something and can't find it. I don't like, know where I anything's at now. Yeah. I don't know where anything's at no. now. I know where my bases are at. Yeah, that's all you need. All 14? You got them all? I don't have them all at home, though. No. All right. nah, shit's, in st- <laughs> shit's in storage. and You know what I mean? No fucking thing. You know, it's, just, it's cool shit, man. You should fucking shit. I don't, know, oh. I don't know what character that was. Where'd you go? Uh, dude, that was that was just me just cursing into a microphone softly. Mm. For all the people out there, fuck you. Fuck you. Or f- fuck you, fuck you. Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going with the uh, dude, it was awkward re- silence there was, there was There was really uncomfortable for a second, dude. Yeah, I was, I was going to ride that out. I want to see how weird it could go. I don't know. I got a little uncomfortable. Really? I didn't. Well, no, I, well, I didn't get uncomfortable. I just didn't know what to do. There's silence. Exactly, like people exactly. are fucking listening to this. Like, <laughs> well, not anymore. I, well, yeah, I, exactly. Everybody, I think everybody stopped listening. <laughs> they, they turned it off at this. Point. If you get the first part on here, dude, we're at like two hours, dog. <laughs> and I really hope, I really hope some poor bastard, if you're listening to this and you made it this far, fucking good for yeah, you. Yeah. Yikes. Your your life just got a little better. Your quality well, of life just well, went up. I mean. <laughs> I'd like to tell myself that. How long are other people's podcasts? I don't know. I, I told it you. It depends, man. Do you listen to podcasts at all? Fuck no. Yeah, I'm into it. I mean, it's cool. You know, I, I started to realize why I got into it, and I think some of it is I don't know where to find. This is going to sound dumb because you can find it everywhere. Yeah. Right. But I, I don't have like a spot I go to to find new music. Really? Like that? Just I'm I'm overwhelmed by it. So unless somebody tells me about some record. Yeah. Uh, and I've been going back and like checking out a bunch of old stuff. Yeah. Like for all the transcribing I'm doing, like I'm going through all kinds of that old shit's records. fun, dude. You know what I was fucking? I was like, I love Tears for Fears. Yeah. I do. You know what I never sat and learned till the other day was fucking Head Over Heels. Really? I've that, never learned. Dude, that fucking baseline by itself, unaccompanied, is so fucking weird. Really? I dude, gotta pull that up. Are check you, it. Yeah. Okay. Dude, if you're transcribing shit, that's one. Yeah. Because like. Listen, to, we'll listen to it when we're done, yeah. bro. It is fucking weird. <laughs> all right, all right. You listen to it, you're like, how does this like in the fucking context of the whole song? It's like it, it's a melodic thing to a certain extent and makes a lot of sense. But like when you play it without the song, you're like, this is fucking weird. Just by itself. Yeah. Yeah. It's really weird. What's the uh, what's the man? What's the tune? It's a fleas bass line off of Jagged Little Pill. Oh What's yeah. The name of that song? Oh, uh, you ought to know. Yeah, like that's that's what that what you just said reminded me of. Like probably out of context, that baseline's like what? Dude, I mean, it, well, the baseline's Flea, killing. Flea is fucking ghetto, and that's why I he's love him. He's all over the place dude, on that line. Dude, it, it, but he's in a good way. Like, covering. but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, no, but dude, he's got that ghetto thing that yeah. I love. Yeah. You know what I mean, dude? That guy, like hands down, probably one of the most uninhibited bass players of our time. Like, dude, he doesn't give a fuck, and I love that. Because right. it's just like, bam, and the motherfucker can play, obviously. He's super yeah. creative, and he's on 11 always. Yeah, yeah, But, man, he really doesn't give a fuck, dude. What's your favorite Chili Peppers record? I mean, Blood Sugar. Yeah. Without. I, I got into him uh, with Red Hot Minute. One Hot Minute. One Hot? I thought it was Red Hot. No, One Hot Minute. One Hot Minute? That's with Dave Navarro on yeah, guitar. Yeah. Dude, that record's great. He, I love that dude, one. he plays his ass off on that record and then, too. Then I went back and checked out uh, Blood. Blood Sugar, yeah. Mother's Milk's great. I mean, all that shit's great. But like, for me, Blood Sugar's like, man, those songs. I don't know. I mean, I grew up with it too. Yeah, so. yeah, that's the thing, man. Even before being a bass player, and then as a bass player as well. Yeah, like that was all around the time that I was like, I just started playing. Yeah. So like, this is the music that was out, and dude, like, the '90s were killing because there's so much. Great music in so many different genres. Yeah. All happening at the same time. Yeah. So much great music to choose from. Uh, and bass wise was like happening, man. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of great like, Peanut from 311. <laughs> which is, you know, Dave I'm Matthews not- Band with Stefan Lessard. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I, I don't, I, I never got into Dave Matthews Band, but fuck, dude. I love 311, dog. Yeah, and like, I love Peanut, dude. Yeah. 
I got dude. Here goes a quick quick road story. So oh, that's what we lost on the first one. We got into some road stories. Uh, was, yeah, there were some gems there. Uh so I'm doing this. I'm doing this festival. I forget where it was, and 311 was headlining, right? And okay. we had opened the main stage that day, or no, like we're not open, but we played early in the day. Mm. We were like third band on or something. There's a couple sub stories that I won't go into. It'll take too long. Anyway, long story short, I get fucking bombed with my buddy who's on the bill as well. And, you know, like Dylan Howard was around for a while, and then he went off because he wasn't playing with Dorothy at the time. He was with another band. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I get fucking really loose, feeling good. Yeah. I go over, and, like, I go to take a shower. There's, like, a shower area for, you know, like, for the, for the bands and stuff for main stage. Yeah. And they had this, like, open bar thing with these, like, fucking goofy drinks and shit. But they were closing up shop. And, dude, I'm there. And I'm, like, we, we were in, like, an RV type thing. This thing called a bandwagon. So, like, I don't want to walk with all my clothes and all my shit. So I just get down to my underwear. We're somewhere hot in the summertime. It's nighttime. So I just cruise in my underwear with my flip-flops and my toiletry bag with yeah. a fucking fresh pair of underwear. Yeah. Makes sense, right? So I get there. <laughs> and I'm, like, kind of blasted up. Everything's good. They give me a bunch of fucking Tito's one shooters to fucking take with me. And I'm like there and like, dude, my toenails were painted and shit. Yeah. Like I was I was on that for a while. I was doing the the, the pedicures and just getting different <laughs> colored nails. They were like sparkle red or some shit. And everybody's like, oh, my would, God, you commit, would you commit to one color across across both feet? Or yeah. Like yeah. No, no, I, w- I didn't switch it up. I didn't get that fancy. I didn't care that much. So I'm there and like everybody's laughing. And dude, I'm on fucking 11, dude. I am so loud. So obnoxious, and I'm in my fucking underwear, <laughs> drunk. And dude, I look over, and like the dudes in 311 are all just staring at me. They're like signing all the promotional materials for the festival. Yeah. Dude, they're all just looking at me, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, dude. Just like, I'm like, dude, I was like, I'm never going to be friends with Peanut. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so I go, I get in the shower, and then, dude, I cruise back, I get fucking dressed, and dude, I'm getting ready for fucking 311 right we played i'm hanging like in between the barricade and the the festival like the the crowd like where the ph- photographers are for the first couple yeah. tunes whatever all good i'm there and i'm in front of peanut dude i'm getting blasted from fucking just bass licks and i'm stoked the security guards trying to like he's like oh man you gotta go and i'm like show my bad i'm like nah dude it's cool man i played early don't worry about it and he's like no man you gotta go I'm like no 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 it's all good man don't sweat it <laughs> So, like, dude, I'm fucking there. I'm just jamming. I'm ignoring him. I got, like, a beer in the back pocket and one in each hand. I'm like, dude, I'm not, I'm not leaving this station. Right, right. I'm in the base <laughs> station right now. You know what I mean? And I'm not going anywhere. And, dude, this guy starts getting hyphy, and my tour manager comes over and, like, starts a fight with this guy. Dude, we almost got kicked out <laughs> from the festival crowds Yeah. because of this, because of that. That's amazing. Dude, and I ended up not being able to stay there. It was shitty. I mean, we, we, we stayed for the festival, but, like, I wanted to – and side stage was closed, so I couldn't – I was with Dorothy. Okay. Yeah, it was a couple years ago now. I, fuck, that might have been two, three years ago? Three years ago, at yeah. least. Fuck. I didn't know 311 was still touring. Oh, yeah, dude. I've seen him a couple times, dude. Yeah, yeah man. Did you, you ever walk, walk up to Peanut? Like, yo, man. No, no, dude. I, I, I mean, I, I had that one chance, but I was, I, was in, I, I was in my fucking underwear and yeah. drunk showing my fucking painted toenails off while they were signing <laughs> shit, looking at me like I was an asshole, which I was probably just being loud and funny, but yeah. At least loud. Definitely loud. I was definitely loud. Definitely loud. And it was, I mean, I didn't see that there, it made sense for me at the time to not wear any clothing other than my fucking chonies because yet again, <laughs> it's like I had to walk far. Yeah. And I didn't want to walk with clothes. And I was like, hey, fuck it, man. It's like, it's not like, it doesn't matter. Right. You know what I mean? Dudes go on stage without their shirts on. Yeah. Dudes go on stage in their underwear. Sure. Drummers do. Yeah. I know a drummer that does. Dorothy's drummer did. Right. He didn't, not with Dorothy, but he would. And so I'm like, hey, you know, it's, not like running around with my fucking dick and balls hanging out, you know what I mean? And so it's all good. It was great, but you know, I just remember be like that moment happening and being like, like just so stoked and so bummed all at the same time. <laughs> I'm just like, man, I'm that guy right now. I'm yeah. That guy, because those guys are like stone cold sober, haven't played a show yet, and it's like, yeah, I fucking played five hours ago. <laughs> right, and you're now you're just in it. I'm just amongst it, dude. Yeah, you know I what like I mean? It. Full tilt. <laughs> there it is, dude. Dude, Boom. full tilt. Yeah. Full fucking tilt. Dude. That's what's up. Dude, thanks for doing this. Fuck yeah. Yeah. We need to do this again. You want to be a 
I, I, I think, think we that, should just have a segment. Just I, a segment. We with should Greg we Cash. we should do a segment and we should like hear some shit up. Maybe have the people chime in with their response. with like what they want to hear. Okay. Or maybe some sort of like open forum. That'd be cool. And o- like if we could figure out a way to have people ask questions, like stream live. Yeah. Yeah. I and definitely want to do like a call-in show. Like, oh, hey, caller. Dude, I, dude, like love line, dude. Yeah. I wanted to be <laughs> baseline. Dude, well. baseline. Dude. Oh, uh, I see what you did there. Oh, you're calling baseline. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> either either Adam Carolla or Tim Meadows as Leon Phelps <laughs> needs to be the host. Please. Yeah. Please. No, I want Tim Meadows. I'm going for Tim Meadows. I want Tim Meadows, yeah, too. Yeah, I, I want Leon Phelps. Dude. To host the call in portion. Dude, I think that this this is seriously what we need to do. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe when you have other mu- other bass players come in that I drill them. Like there's maybe we do a segment. Oh, okay. I like that. You know what You're I mean? Just gonna tear them apart. We're well, not tear them apart, the, but the like dude who comes in with the tube pre on the, his well, there's there's gonna be blood. That's that's how we do is like there's we gonna we, be blood. we uh we fucking we trick them. Like, <laughs> how do you feel about how do you feel about so saying amps with two preamps? Oh man, they're cool. Oh, we gotta talk. <laughs> yeah, dude, do you, you want to come in? You want to come in? Right, dude, let me tell you something about my boy Leo Fender. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do this more. All right, all right, my man. Thanks for doing it. Awesome. All right, peace. All right, that was the colorful Greg Cash. Um, thanks again, buddy, for coming in here. Check him out. Uh, he's really pushing his Instagram, at Greg Cash. Go follow him, and uh, if you have any complaints about anything he said, hit him up. Let him know about it. Um, yeah, that's it. I will have some more uh, updates coming for you with what's happening at the Bay Shed website soon. Uh, I'm still working hard to create some content. Uh, so check that stuff out. Don't check it out yet. I just said I'm working on it. What am I talking about? It's coming. It's coming up. It's coming up. All right. I'll, I'll be talking about it. I'll be talking about it. And now I'm just rambling. So I'm going to let you guys all go. Be good. And I'll talk to you soon.